This beauty here is Pacific Wax Myrtle, one of the coolest and gorgeous trees we have here in Cascadia, one of my absolute favorites. And while it has these really thick, durable, waxy, evergreen leaves here that help it survive in these damp, cool coastal climates, it's really unique in this part of the world for a few different reasons. See, if you take a look at a map at its native distribution, you'll see that it's really prominent along the coast from Southern California up through Southern Washington, but not really anywhere else until you get to this little peninsula here on Vancouver Island between Barclay and Clayquot Sound on traditional Euclid and Tlokuit territory, and no one really knows why. See, about 12,000 years ago, this whole area was covered in about a mile thick of ice during recent glaciation, which would have pushed populations of this species further south into California, which then made their way back up north following the retreat of that ice sheet. But there's no reason for why the birds or other critters who are dispersing its seeds north who have had this gap in distribution between Washington and Vancouver Island, and it grows fairly well ornamentally when planted in the spaces in between or even closer inland along the Salish Sea, so it can grow in these regions. You know, that just doesn't quite make sense. And of course, there were isolated pockets or islands of refuge from the glaciation um, on like the Brooks Peninsula further north on Vancouver Island, for example, which were never covered in ice. But if the Pacific wax myrtle had found refuge there, then it would still be present there, but it's not found there either. So one of my favorite hypotheses on how this species came to be here on this little peninsula on Vancouver Island and nowhere else for hundreds of kilometers is that it was distributed by another critter, humans. See, prior to European colonization of these lands, various First Nations along the coast of Cascadia from California up through Alaska had a very robust trade network along the ocean, traveling thousands of kilometers to barter and trade goods with one another. And it's thought that at some point in this trading, the wax myrtle here either made its way up by hitching a ride or by being traded or gifted from nations further south. So when I see this tree, not only am I blown away by its sheer beauty and ability to thrive in these relatively harsh ecosystems compared to those further south where they originate from, but I'm reminded of the beautiful interconnection between between groups of humans and non-human people across the continents and lands we all share and how they've ebbed and flowed over time through various climatic and cultural shifts and that is pretty dang awesome.